I'm John Shane Halls, pioneer field agronomist in Northern Ohio. Just like corn, this soybean crop has been through a lot of stress so far this spring. Depending on planting date, it's experienced snow, frigid soil temperatures, multiple frost and freeze events, and most recently flooding rains and saturated soil. While the crop still looks pretty good in most areas, there are some things to watch for as emergence occurs. I want to share some tips that I'm watching and would encourage you to watch in your field to evaluate variety performance, planter performance, and the remaining yield potential for this season. When evaluating soybean stands, singulation and uniformity are less critical than in corn, but they still play a role in overall yield potential. With cool wet weather, seed treatments will be valuable again this year. Check plant roots and hypocotyls for disease or insect damage. Also watch for injury from pre-emergence herbicides. Since the first significant rain that many soybeans fields received was a heavy rain right around emergence timing, splashing injury may be visible. While plants may outgrow these symptoms, severe damage can cause stand loss or create opportunity for seedling blight pathogens to impact the plant. When evaluating stands impacted by frost events, make sure to check for growth from axillary buds rather than only looking at the color of the cotyledons. To check soybean populations, I prefer to use a hula hoop for drilled beans and a tape measure for planted beans. When using a hula hoop, use the multiplication factor for the size of hula hoop you are using. In this case, I multiply by 11,800 since I have a 26 inch diameter hula hoop. For planted beans, measure the appropriate distance for one ten thousandth of an acre, count plants and multiply by 10,000. These estimates may not be very exact, but if conducted in several spots, give a very good indication of surviving stand. Soybeans have tremendous ability to compensate for reductions in stand if uniformity is somewhat consistent. If a stand has been entirely lost, as may be the case in areas where water ponded for several days, replanting is needed, but until stands are reduced below 80 to 90,000 plants per acre, adding to thin stands may not provide a yield advantage. Of course, there are exceptions to these recommendations. Some soil types, such as heavy clays or sands, may need a greater final population in order to shade the ground and achieve acceptable yields. Also keep in mind that weed control can become more difficult to achieve when stands are reduced. To learn more, or if you have any questions about evaluating your crops this spring, check in with your local Pioneer sales representative, territory manager, and myself. Thanks for watching, have a safe spring. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.